After traveling in Latin America for five months, we have now reached our last country of our trip, which is no other than Mexico. We'll be spending one month exploring the beauty of this country, visiting several different destinations. And I now welcome you to join the journey exploring Mexico together. In today's Mexico travel series episode, I'll be taking you guys to Puebla, which if you ask me is a bit of an underrated destination in Mexico. I had personally barely heard much about it before and was so surprised to discover what a beautiful city it is. Hello everyone, my name is Janika and welcome to this video. Yesterday evening we arrived to our second last destination here in Mexico and also our second last destination of this six month long Latin America backpacking trip which is kind of crazy, I don't know how to feel about it, a bit mixed feelings but Let's not think about that yet. Let's still enjoy this trip while we can. We arrived to a city called Puebla. This is located a few hours away from Mexico City and it's supposedly a pretty big city. It's supposedly also very beautiful, so I'm excited to explore it. Yesterday we checked into quite a nice hotel. We decided because our trip is starting to be at the end part of it that we would treat ourselves a little bit. So the plan for now is to first go and get some breakfast and then I think we're gonna walk Walk around a little bit and get a feel of the city and see what it's like. After our breakfast, we decided to go on a bit of a walk to get the feel of the city and ended up discovering lots of cool spots. Firstly, we visited Catedral de Puebla, which is a cathedral that's free to visit and very, very beautiful, so totally worth it. then came across what is known as the Alley of the Frogs, which is probably the most picture square street in Puebla with its brightly colored houses. Here you can also find a bunch of cool antique stores. Close to the Alley of the Frogs is the Parian Market, which is Puebla's largest handcraft market. We didn't buy anything, but it was still fun to just stroll around. Right next to the market, you can also find the artist quarter of Puebla. Here you can find a community of artists who all have their little space where they create and sell their art.
We also got to discover this street called Calle de Dulces de Santa Clara, which is a cute and colorful street famous for its shops selling traditional Mexican sweets. now been back at the hotel for a few hours i've been editing a video i must say just from the first impression of this city i can already say that i love it we saw so many beautiful places today just by walking around and i really really enjoyed it and i can't wait for the coming days to explore even more so here's the promised room tour firstly we have a huge bathroom like there's so much space in here it looks like this there's the shower then over here we have our huge bed which is really nice really comfortable i love it here i'll show you guys the view we have a nice view although the window is a bit dirty but we have a nice view over the cathedral that's right next to us which is very very nice just had some breakfast and now it is time for day two of exploring Puebla and first we're gonna go to this library slash museum you'll see soon The entrance is 45 pesos and it's not a big place it's just basically this one really big room this is like a library that has been turned into a museum and it just looks very very cool so we wanted to come and check it out even though this old library is not a huge museum or anything it was still a very cool place to visit personally I love old places like this so for me it was very much worth the money this library was founded in 1646 and and is recognized by UNESCO for being the first and oldest public library in all of the Americas. For today's next stop, we have to do a bit of walking to get there from the historical center. I think it's like a half an hour walk-ish, so let's go.
visiting that park felt like a nice little break from the hustle and bustle of the city. I didn't know they also had like a tiny theme park or amusement park there. And even though we decided not to visit the amusement park itself, we still saw a bit of it. We saw the flamingos from a distance and we were able to visit the restaurant and have a bit of a treat. And we got a bit into the ambiance of the place. So yeah, it was a really nice little place where to visit. So we ended up actually not having to pay anything for the entrance. Normally you would have to pay, but when we arrived, for some reason, the ticket seller just wasn't there. So then after waiting for a while, the security guard ended up letting us in for free. So not complaining. I'm someone who doesn't necessarily know super much about trains, but I do quite enjoy them. There's just something very cozy about trains, which I love. This is such a cool museum. It's really making me want to go on a long train ride on an old school train, like an overnight train or something, maybe in Europe. Hmm, that's a trip and video idea for the future, for sure. I'll have to look into it. Big recommendation for this place. It's also quite a big museum. So yeah, it's very, very nice. just visited a museum. It was like this tunnel underground, but it was maybe a little bit disappointing because it was very, very short and small of a place. You walk through it in two minutes, but the ticket includes an entry also to some other tunnels, but it is a bit of a walk to get there from that place, uh, 1.2 kilometers to be exact, but it is included to the price. So we might as well go and check it out because yeah, we have paid for it. And that first place was a bit disappointing, but I'll let you guys know if this is something that's worth to do or or not. So very shortly put, these secret tunnels were used by the Mexicans to move between the forts and the city during the Battle of Puebla in 1862. This tunnel thing is much longer. Apparently it's 152 meters long versus the one that we just went to. That was like seven meters maybe, <laughs> but uh, looks very, very cool. No idea where this leads, if we have to walk back eventually or if we'll exit somewhere else. We'll find out. We have now reached the end of the tunnel and the exit it is a different spot than where the entrance was. Let's see, hopefully we've come closer to our hotel and not <laughs> further away. Oh wait, there's uh, another tunnel. <laughs> so I guess we're going in this one too. Okay, I would say now that these tunnels are definitely worth it. The first place, no. But this second place, yes, it's really cool. It's also really nice and cool in here. So if it's a hot day and you wanna escape the heat a bit, this could be the perfect activity for you. So these tunnels have different sections basically. So it's much longer than what I first said in the beginning. Now we're already entering section four or experience four. And this part just by itself already is 195 meters. 